you know? <laughs> <laughs> There's only one dude that I've seen that's managed to pull off living in your mom's basement and still, you know, clocking dollars. That dude from SNL that did that movie recently with um uh, with uh with Bill Burr. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't like, he still about. does the dude literally lives in his mom's basement. But here's the thing, it's between him and his mom and the house is paid off. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was reading that the, uh, I forgot what movie she was on. This girl, oh, the girl, I think it's the girl that did A Fault in Our Stars. That girl's a multi-millionaire and she rents an apartment. Genius. It's like, and people are, you know, that, this is, that, that's the thing I don't understand. Like, there's a lot of dudes, like, um, what's the guy, the owner of Ikea? The guy's a billionaire, and he's still driving a 1984 Volvo, and he's, he, he, he still lives in the little house that he was raised in, and he goes to eat every day at the Ikea cafeteria, and dude's a billionaire. People are crapping on him. It's like, dude, what people don't understand is, like, when you get a certain amount of money, if you start living that certain lifestyle, that move, that money is not gonna last. You know, like uh, I was. Uh, uh, if you see that thing about lottery winners, every single one of them within two or three years they go bankrupt. Why? Because uh, like, uh, they that had one dude there that 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 won a hundred million dollars. In two years, he was broke. Buys this huge mansion. Uh, people were complaining because his parking lot looked like a car dealership. Twenty-two cars. And like, why? dude, you were working in a fucking pizza place, and why the hell do you have to buy a a, a five hundred thousand square foot mansion? Oh man! Why are you in cars? It's like, you know, the, 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 and and as a matter of fact, one of my one of the guys that I work with, he was telling me about a friend of hers, a friend of his. He lives in a really posh neighborhood. This lady is worth about two billion dollars, and if you see her, you would think that she's homeless. She's driving a 1984 Jeep Grand Cherokee that is down to the 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 the, the primer. Wow! And she's worth all that money. But the thing is that that's what keeps them rich. It's possible to you know like the, the working class that you know they they make twenty thousand dollars a year and then they gotta they gotta wear the five hundred dollars sneakers, the 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 three hundred dollars shirt. And the two thousand dollar phone, like I was, uh, I saw, a, a, I saw a cartoon not so long ago that 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 had me dying. They had this this rich guy, he was dry, he 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 had a a twenty dollar t shirt, a hundred dollar pair of pants, like a seventy five dollar pair of sneakers, a, a four hundred dollar watch, you know, like everything came out to like less less than like five hundred dollars. Then they show the poor guy, the guy has. A two thousand dollar pair of pants, two thousand dollar sneakers, a a a twelve hundred dollar phone, a nine hundred dollar watch, but yet he's taking a bus. Oh my gosh! Like it makes <laughs> no sense. It makes no sense. <laughs> well, that, that's the beauty of wisdom, you know. Wisdom as as old as wisdom can be, you know. If we're paying attention and we keep listening to it. It never goes out of style. I mean, and the behavior, the habits are always there. Like, um, I remember back in the day, um, I was about, I say like 14, 15, the first time I heard the story that you had mentioned that um, there was a guy that, that you knew from, from, from work or from school. I wasn't too sure at that time. This is when you had the, the Pontiac that you had, um, that he kept talking about, oh, why are you wearing this? Why are you wearing that or whatnot? And he has like all oh, at least eight hundred dollars worth of clothes. Back at that time, eight hundred dollars worth of clothes was that's easy like three thousand dollars worth of clothes now. While you driving yep. by your, with your Pontiac, dude was dude was at the bus stop. It's like, dude, like you could talk all this shit yep. you want, but you're the one that's still taking the bus. <laughs> yep. You know, I was actually talking about that with Adonis yesterday. It's like. You know, he was telling me about how people were clowning him with the sneakers because, he, you know, he didn't have proper sneakers and stuff. He had, you know, he has clean sneakers, but not no name brand and this and that. And, you know, like I, I was telling him, I was like, yeah, you know, they were probably clowning you, but I, I guarantee you that they, they've never been to the places you've been. 
the marriage that you have, they never have. And most likely, the parents are either divorced or they're on, uh, on public assistance, this and that, and that is exactly what it was. You know, these kids are, uh, are rocking the latest sneakers and this and that, and the parents are on public assistance. And it's like, yeah, like, that, uh, that's great. They has the latest sneakers or whatever, but at the end of the day, what, what do you appreciate more? Having some cheap sneakers and then going out and enjoying your life? Like, even when Nia had that, uh, I had that talk a few years ago because she was complaining that she had the, the, those old flip phones and all her friends had Apple phones and this and that. And I told her, yeah, that's awesome. They have Apple phones and you have that cheap, that, that, that cheap phone. But it's like, what would you rather me spend money on? Taking you out and you enjoying yourself or getting a phone that all you can do is look at all day, you know? So I tell you know, and that's why I tried to instill in them. It's like, dude, it, it doesn't matter. Like, I didn't get a real phone until, what was it, a couple of years ago that I got that stupid Samsung. But my phones were never over $100. And even for years, remember when I got back to work, back, you know, that was out of work for almost four years and I started working? I still had my Obama phone and I was proud of it. That and, um, I took the to eat. And that happened on me that. You know, why am I still with that? Uh, uh, I used to call it the welfare phone. And he's like, why do you still have that welfare phone? It's like, well, it does the same thing yours does, except it doesn't take pictures. But then he's like, yeah, but, you know, my phone, I can do this, this, and that. And I pay three, four $400 a month and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, but let's break some things down. All right. All right. Even I do, right? But then again, what am, what am I driving? What are you driving? That's when I had the black uh, M M5, the the Beamer. Yeah. And, and I'm like, what are you driving? And it's like, all right, taking out food to dinner. You know, how much money am I making? How much money are you making? Then he was like, oh, shit, you're right. It's like, dude, you know, why am I going to go and spend money just, just to show off? I got, it's like $500 a month. When I can get a phone that's a hundred dollars a month, and then those extra, I can go and go out with my kids, or you know, invest into something, or do this or do that, you yeah. know, like why, like you know, yes, is broke. Like I'm not rich. I'm, I'm, I work for my ass, but, but you know, I live, I live better than I'm supposed to because of the way that I spend my money, and you know that because you, you're the same way. Yeah. It's like, you know, because of you, how much did I save on computers that, that people were spending the, a, a ridiculous amount of money and I was doing the same thing they did and I paid you, what, like $200 for the computer you built me? Yeah. And it just, <laughs> it, it, it died out because of the motherboard. And once I get the, you know, I got the same performance and the same thing as a $2,000 computer. Yeah. Even now with this one that I replaced, you know, it was a little bit more money, but you know, compared to what I could have spent, I, a, another com com a comparable computer would have been like twenty five hundred. Like that kid, that that kid that I told you, Adonis built a computer for. He spent fifteen hundred dollars on this computer that that does insane things, so he can play Fortnite. Oh boy! <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> my computer, I, I I use it for work. I use it for gaming, and I spent what five hundred dollars. A little bit more because I wanted to upgrade, you know. But that, oh, you know, that's the kind of thing that you know. And we, you're the same way I am. So I'm, not, I'm preaching to the choir because you know, it's not about how much money you make, it's how how much money you save or how much money you spend. That's where the real thing is. What's the point of you know, making two, three hundred thousand dollars a year, and spending, you know, two or three hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> Like the that OLED TV that you were about to get that was close to like two thousand dollars, and I was like, wait, hold on, but that, that TCL don't sleep on it. It's like a third of that's a fourth right. of the price, and it'll last you for a long time. And we're going on what four years now, and, and it's TCL still picking. picking. <laughs> and what's funny is that you know what that 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 TV I was crazy about that from BJ's. I was like, oh, let me check that they had it what for like almost 2500 on BJ's I found it online for like 1200 bucks wow 
And then I was like, well, you know, what, what am I really gaining here? All right, I get an OLED TV, but is it worth it? Like, my, my TCL is still kicking. You know, Adonis has got a TCL, and, and they're still kicking. So why am I going to go and spend all this money on a, on a TV I can use it for something else, you know? <laughs> no, ironically, my um, my father-in-law, the, the TV that I gave him, the one that we used to do um, karaoke on, that, yep. that thing is like seven seven years old at this point. Still kicking. Now he's upgrading his TV. He's getting a 70-inch uh, Samsung. The same exact price, and the TV's coming back back to coming over to my living room now because he said, "Okay, I want to upgrade to a big TV." Because I mean, he's up there in age; he wants to get to to enjoy seventy inch. And I told him, "Dude, live yep. it up. Don't feel guilty. I don't mind taking taking that TV. No problem." But the thing is about to reach eight years old, and it's still kicking. Well, that's the thing that. A lot of people go by, oh, I got to get this, I got to get that. But then they don't do their research. And then two or three years later, the, 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 the TV's dead. Yep. Dude, you know? JVC, before JVC, um, you know, wasn't getting the attention that they, that, they, that they had at that point. JVC was still kicking it. JVC was still puts out um, good products, but, you know, they're not going to be, be known as Samsung. But the problem is that Samsung is so many hit and misses. As long yep. as you go for a regular LED backlit HD TV 4K, you don't have to do the HDR because that just wastes the, the the backlight much faster. Dude, that's what he went for. He got the thing for like 930 bucks, um, two year warranty, and it's being shipped to his door. Done. Nice. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and what's nice is that the TV I gave him seven years ago, now it's coming to my living room. So I'm still benefiting off of this thing. So, <laughs> well, that's the thing. A lot, you know, that, uh, and that's, that's one thing that I thank Pops for that he taught us how to be frugal. Although, the, you remember back when I was a teenager, I wasn't frugal at all, you know, with the $200 shirts and the polo shirts and the. Stocks I only wore once because Pops took it to the Dominican Republic and hit it. I never saw it again until 1990, the last time I went to the Dominican Republic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now you don't catch me wearing that. It's like if you see me with a polo shirt, I'll probably go and get it, you know, at, at, at consignment or something, not paying no $200 like back in the day. Like, oh, uh, I wish I could go turn back time and save the money that I spent on it. Until we found, the, if you remember Conway's and the $10 stores? <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, Until this I found that, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> $10 store really but sold? I think the last time I went to... <laughs> remember yeah. that when we, and when we like went the first time? Bucks, and I remember. <laughs> yeah. And I remember when we went back to Brooklyn, people were like, damn, the nigga's styling and whatnot. And they didn't know that it was like 10 bucks. 